Hello everybody and welcome back to the Trains Blender tutorial series. I have a quick and easy tutorial for you today. We will be focusing on how to import diagrams into the scene and how we can use them to create a locomotive or asset to the right size and scale. So to start off, we have our blank scene here in Blender. What I want to do is I want to go to create on the left here. Turn on my screencast key so everyone can see what I'm doing. Select empty down the bottom here. And then we're going to go over to image and we're going to go to open. So I'm going to go to my diagrams folder, which is under here. And then we're going to go to, I think it's under G class. Yep and we're going to go and select this one. I always start off with the side elevation. So I'm gonna press three and five on the num numpad. So I go into the orthographic view and we're gonna come up to rotation here and we're gonna set our rotation to 90 degrees on the X axis and 90 degrees on the Z axis. So it flips it up to the right angle of view. Now I'm just going to press S and scale this up a little bit. So just so we can see what we're doing and move it over like this. Next thing I want to do is I want to import a cube and I want to make this the distance of the largest or longest measurement on the diagram, which is the 19,820 millimeter over headstocks measurement. So I come to dimensions and I select Y. This is the length of the asset and I am going to put in 19,820 millimeters and that will automatically convert it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select the diagram again and I'm gonna move it down pressing G and I'm going to scale it so that this measurement where it says overhead stocks, I'm going to scale it so it, the shape fits in between the lines or the end of the arrow, sorry. So we wanna be really precise here. This is how we're going to get our scale correct. Move it down a little bit more. And that's about right. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna move this up a little bit, just so I can see the whether the diagram is distorted or it's on an angle. And it is slightly on an angle because we can see that the gap between that line and the shape is slightly lower over on this side compared to the left and the way we fix that is we're going to put the higher side down so it's just touching the top of the uh, rectangle and then we're going to select a rotation and we're rotating on the x axis and we're just going to do it so that it's in line like this now you might have to move this down a little bit move it over you might see that we have to slightly redo our scale again and that looks pretty spot on. Next thing I want to do is I want to go over to the height measurement. The highest height measurement we've got on here is 4,260 millimeters. So I'm going to come to my Z in my dimensions tab and I'm going to enter in 4,260 millimeters. And I'm going to drag this over using the G tool. And we can see that the scale is slightly out on the height. If I press, if I actually, if I move this down so that it's in line and then press SZ to do the scaling on the Z axis only and move it up slightly, we will get a better scaling of the diagram. And that looks pretty good enough. Next thing I wanna do is correct where the diagram is sitting in the 3D space so that it's not necessarily hanging over into one particular quadrant of the scene. And the way we do this is we're going to take our uh, cube, which is now to the correct measurements of the diagram, and we're going to correct its location on the X, Y, and Z axis to zero meters. And then we're going to select the height dimension. We're going to copy that. We're going to click the Z location. We're going to paste it in, and then we're gonna do forward slash two, which means to divide by two and that's going to move the shape up. But what this does, it shows us where the zero height should be compared to the maximum height of the asset or the diagram. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move our diagram down 
to compare the length of the diagram first to make sure that it's lined up correctly. And then we're going to move it down and we're going to see where the baseline of the diagram is or where the zero height of the diagram is. And we're going to make sure that that is sitting perfectly at the bottom of this shape. Now we have a side elevation, a front elevation and a top down elevation. Instead of having to repeat the process that we just did, all we have to do is select the diagram, press control C and then control V to copy and paste. And then we're going to rotate this on the Z axis by pressing R and then Z and then entering in 90 and then you want to do negative. If you look down in the bottom left there you'll see that it says negative 90 along the global Z axis. So now we have the front elevation ready to be lined up. Now what I do is I make sure that I have the front elevation selected and I set this to 0x, 0y and then I move it over. Now we're going to enter in the width of the object. So you'll see that the largest measurement for width is 3,122 millimeters. So we're gonna head over to the X dimension and we're gonna enter in 3,122 millimeters. And this will set the size accordingly. And we're going to do the same as we did before. And we're going to measure the width of the diagram to make sure that's correct. And the scale should be correct because we have already aligned it to what the length on the Y axis would be. And then we're going to go back here. We're going to copy the Z location height and put it back onto the front elevation to make sure that lines up correctly. Next, we have our top down view. So I'm going to grab the side elevation again and I'm going to copy and paste it. And then we're going to do rotate on the Y axis and we're going to enter in 90 and put that negative or minus symbol at the start of it again. So I'm going to press seven and then six until we're aligned correctly on the top down view. And I'm going to bring this over on the X axis until it's roughly where the middle is. And you'll see that we can see here, we've got crosses on the couplers to show where the middle of the diagram is. We don't have to worry about scale for the top down because now we've corrected the scale both length and height wise on the side and front elevations and it will be the same because we've copy and pasted the diagram. One thing that I will do now is because we're going by the width over the rear view mirrors instead of the width over the handrails, I'm going to change the width of the object to the width of the handrails, 2970 millimeters on the X axis. And then you'll see that when I show and hide this, it's roughly the bounding area of where the handrails are, if you can see that there. And that should be good. Now we can be happy that we have our diagrams to the correct scale and we can go on building our mesh. All right, guys, that's all for this one today. I just wanted to quickly go over how we set up our diagrams in the scene. I'll go over how we can then make the mesh in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one today. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to keep in contact with how we're going through this series. I'll catch you guys in the next one.